Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios. Time for another week of Press Row. Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. Lots of good games to look forward to this weekend. And I think the biggest talk in high school football, of course, is Coldwater Minster defending state champs going at it. What's the key to this game? Whoever scores the most points wins. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever takes home the 50 50 is a winner, too. Yeah, that, that could be a, a nice little treat. I, I think so far through the first two weeks, there has been a whole lot of surprises. Minster's still really good. Cold water's still really good. My question from the beginning of the year for Minster still remains is how's that line going to play, particularly against a physical team like Coldwater? I know that they've, they've invested quite a bit of time and effort in the Minster weight room and trying to make sure that those players are physical and get where Coach Stokes wants them to be. I think the test will be this week against Coldwater, a team that you never doubt about the physicality of the Cavaliers. And, and the Cavs have allowed one touchdown in two weeks, so uh, the scoring might be a little tougher than you'd like to think if you're Minster. So, uh, Maybe some early success would uh, help them out, get them a little confidence against that cold water defense. But, boy, you know, two weeks and only one touchdown against Kenton and Jefferson, so the cold water defense is obviously loaded from the start of the season. If Minster is to pull this out, they've got to strike quick, and this is a quick strike offense to yeah. begin with, but they've got to strike quick three, at least three times. I mean, get them down three scores, maybe a 20, 21 nothing deficit to start things out and then you I think, think Coldwater's offense isn't gonna be able to score Oh, I think they can but I think you know if for Minster to keep that momentum to keep that positivity so to speak they're gonna have to get up quick now granted Coldwater could come right back and score within the snap of a finger this could be the game of the year in our area third straight home game for Coldwater and yep. that's they'll be they'll have a big crowd and they shut down the pass against Kenton and then they shut down the run against Jefferson Minster can do both pretty well yeah, very. So we'll see if that mixes things up in, in that contest. Look, looking back at the first two weeks of the season, have we learned anything that we didn't already know? It seems there hasn't been any major surprises so far. What, what's something you've learned that maybe you didn't know two weeks ago, Todd? Uh, you know, I, I, I think maybe one team that surprised me a little bit is Ada. I think uh, you know, Whip and USV didn't really surprise me, but they handled their business against Arlington last week and, and you know I think Arlington's a pretty decent team so uh, this week Ada gets LCC and a, a chance to exact a little revenge after some years of uh, struggle with them but uh, to me that's one of the things that's kind of jumped out that surprised me so maybe we learned something there. You know you talk about that Ada matchup and Arlington's two scores against Ada last Friday night both came on pick sixes it wasn't the offense that did the scoring it was the defense so I think that says something about the defense of Ada as well coming in and uh, talked with Coach Olwen today, as a matter of fact, getting ready for the Friday night broadcast of that game. And uh, he's very pleased where they're at right now. And uh, he's got a great quarterback in Seth Conley, who started last year as a freshman, has you know thrown eight touchdowns in week one against Upper Soda Valley. But last year threw for 23 touchdowns, only got picked off eight times, and also threw for over 2,700 yards. But the biggest surprise to me is, guys, I didn't know you could flip home sites when you get a game yeah. canceled <laughs> on Friday and go to Saturday and get yourself at a whole new home site. Yeah, referring to Shawnee and Wapakoneta, of course, that uh, the, the rain on Friday creating some problems. I, I think one thing maybe I've learned uh, from the first couple of weeks is that last year St. John's going 4-6 and six was not a fluke. Blue Jays off to an 0-2 start this year, and it, it could be a long season at Stadium Park for St. John's. And you might even be talking about a, a rebuilding process going on with the Blue Jays just because their numbers aren't going to add up for a couple of years, just how much the enrollment has shrunk at St. John's. Yeah, and, you know, we've all seen this coming, uh, this dip in just level of boys, number of boys in the school. And especially in that conference, you're not going to be able to compete at that level uh, with those kinds of numbers. And you're right, it could be the worst season for the Jays since way back in the dark ages before Vic Whiting. They've had one, two, and eight year with Todd Schulte, but just to give you guys an idea of where the numbers have shrunk, 98 boys played football four years ago. They have 46 on the roster last week. Yeah, just numbers are numbers. Can't fight it. Yep. Eventually that catches up with you. It's just too much to overcome. What about in the Western Buckeye League? I think we came into the season thinking it would be a strong year for the WBL. And it certainly feels like the top is still very strong. But I think top to bottom, it's a, a much better league than even I anticipated. I think that's something that, that I learned. And you can point to the St. Mary's Van Wert game from this past week with St. Mary's overcoming a 20-point deficit. And all of a sudden, St. Mary's is now 1-0 in the league and Van Wert is 0-1. And we were looking at Van Wert as a potential team to shake up that league. 
Yeah, I think I think the bottom of the WBL in so far as Van Wert, especially, has been down for a while. They're better. I think really right now the only doormat appears to be Shawnee. They have really struggled. I'm not sure the top is near as good as it was last year. I think Wapakoneta is still strong, but last year's team set a very high bar. Uh, we've already talked about how you know, Kenton doesn't appear to be quite where they were maybe a year ago. So that still needs to play out, I think. But I, I do think the bottom of the league has improved over the last several years, and that makes the league overall maybe as good, but the top maybe not quite there. Still got Ottawa Glendorf into the mix as well, guys. And a team that had, they, you know, they were in a hard-fought battle with Bath. And maybe, maybe Bath's a little bit better than some of us were thinking at the beginning of the season and, you know, back at scrimmage time as well. But I think Van Wert, Ottawa Glendorf this Friday night at Edgar Stadium. That's going to be a good test to see where Van Wert is right now and also to see where Ottawa Glendorf is because this could be a game where if OG gets rolling on that offense, they're, they're pretty hard to stop. And uh, could they get things going and maybe get that steamroller going on the road too? Well, and it certainly looks as if Defiance has made a step forward as yes. well. Yeah, Defiance is better. Yeah. This yes. season, it played Kenton tough in the loss on, on Friday. So it looks like, as we said, the bottom of the WBL has, has risen up. Maybe the top has come down a little bit. But I, I still think one through nine, it's going to be a very – Difficult league. Yeah. Absolutely. You can see the Wapakoneta Kenton game on WOSN 11 p.m., or actually that game will be on WTLW following the sports report this week. All right, let's go to college football. Ohio State, the big story on Monday night. They got the first one of the season against Virginia Tech, and a lot of playmakers look good. Will an Ohio State Buckeye win the Heisman Trophy? And if you're going to say yes, who's your pick? Well, if you would have asked me this a week ago, I would have said no way it was going to happen. I don't think an Ohio State quarterback, I don't think any quarterback under Urban Meyer will ever win a Heisman Trophy be just because of the fact that you had success with Kenny Guyton as a quarterback, you had success with Bra Braxton Miller, with Cardell Jones, with JT Barrett. I think the Heisman voters are going to say an Ohio State quarterback won't win because he's a system quarterback because it doesn't matter who the quarterback is, they have a lot of success. I don't think Ezekiel Elliott will win the Heisman Trophy this win this year because for a lot of reasons, I don't think he's going to get enough touches for a lot of different reasons. But I think Braxton Miller, now as wide receiver H-back, I think Braxton Miller has a legitimate chance to win the Heisman Trophy. If he continues to have games like he did against Virginia Tech, over 140 yards of total offense, two touchdowns, electric moves that got a lot of attention, and that's what the Heisman Trophy is a lot of times, is getting a lot of attention, particularly early on. I think Braxton's got the best chance out of the Ohio State candidates to win the trophy. B button slash circle for your PlayStation and Xbox heads. Who, you know, like to hit that button and watch that spin yeah, move. That that's was what I was beautiful. Thinking, yeah. that, was, that was nice. I think if a Buckeye wins it, it's Ezekiel Elliott. You know, provided he does, like you said, he gets the touches and runs the ball and runs the ball hard. And he's got that pedigree already following him from last year, especially the 85 yards through the heart of the South. On Monday night, it was 80 yards through the ACC where he took off in that second drive and, and scored the touchdown there. If it's any Buckeye that wins it, it would be Ezekiel Elliott, in my opinion. Now, the latest odds has Cardell Jones being the favorite yeah. to win the Heisman Trophy out of all the candidates, right. which... Yeah, I, I agree with Mark. I think it's Braxton Miller. Uh, for one thing, I'm not sure Cardell Jones is actually going to be the quarterback all year. I still think Urban's got something up his sleeve. I still think Braxton's going to play a little QB here and there, and that's only going to help his chances. He's going to throw five or six touchdowns. He's going to score a bunch running. He's going to catch some. Who knows what he's going to do? And he's already come close to winning the Heisman Trophy a couple times. So uh, I think Braxton Miller's probably got the best chance because he'll be the featured guy that position and that offense is the feature position. Now, has any receiver won the Heisman since Tim Brown, though? Well, um, since well, Desmond was Desmond moved. Howard, right? Yeah, yes. that was after Tim Brown. Yeah, yeah, there have been a couple yeah. years I, after. I think that's it, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's I mean, hard it, to win from there, but well, he's it, already. It, it, it has turned into being give it to the best quarterback. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, occasionally you get a running back still in it, but it. it it, it is not as, as diverse of an award as it once was, and we all know no true defenders ever won the award. Right, and I'll tell you this. Uh, I think if we are, uh, those of us of this generation and younger, are finding out what it was like to be a Buckeye fan in the late 60s and early 70s because this team is so good. It is so loaded. It is so big a favorite, and every game they're going to be playing, it's like the 68 Buckeyes. There's just no question they're the best team in the, on the field when they're out there. I don't care if they're playing Michigan State. I don't care if they're playing Michigan. I don't even care if they're playing Alabama. This is the best team in the country, and it's not even close. And there is no way they should lose a game this year. They whipped Virginia Tech with four guys that would start for anybody in the country sitting on the bench. This team is absolutely loaded. The latest projections have Ohio State winning all their games by 
with the lowest percentage of probable victory outside of the, the Michigan State game, which was a 77% chance mm -hmm. Ohio State wins, the next lowest, 92% <laughs> chance of beating Penn State. It's 68 all over again, yeah. except they're not all super sophomores, but a lot of them are underclassmen, but it's 68 all over again. There's no question about it. Now the only thing you worry about is making sure they, they don't just come out lazy because they're so favorite. They're the, so the favorite. But sure. I don't think that'll happen in Columbus with the people behind that are the support system yeah. of uh, Coach Mar, AK Coach Marathi there. He'll make sure those boys are ready to go. All right, let's go to the NFL now. We've got the season opening up on Thursday night, the Pats and the Steelers. Which team would you rather be? I'm going to give you two choices here. One, you'll figure out quickly who's who. Would you rather be a team that consistently makes the playoffs but doesn't get a playoff victory or a team that never sniffs the playoffs and constantly has top five picks with that bright future, that promise on the way? And you can They're fill in who's the state who. They're both of Ohio, yeah. I guess. It, it, <laughs> who would you rather be, the Browns? And brown yeah. and like would you rather be the, the Browns or the Bengals is the question. Well, based on the past five years, clearly you'd rather be the Bengals because the Browns have had no chance. Sure, they keep getting the opportunity to draft people, but they keep messing it up. So if you're going to be in the playoffs and lose or be 6-10 and 10 or 4-12, and 12, that's an easy choice. Now, if you want to project... I don't project, think it's an easy yeah. choice because... If you're a Bengals fan, do you legitimately think you have a chance of winning the Super Bowl this year? No, you think you're going to be, okay, maybe we're going to get 10, maybe 11 wins, we'll get in the playoffs, and lose in the first week again. Now, the Browns no, have no chance of getting the playoffs, but every year the Browns have got the promise. The promise of being a special team. The promise of finding the right guy. And I think the promise is a lot, be is a lot better to have that promise than the reality of the Cincinnati Bengals situation. Did They're not bad enough to blow it up and become <laughs> really good. Yeah. The Browns are bad enough to blow it up every year. Did you guys, I don't know if you saw this or heard, even heard about this, um, this past week, I was, I believe, on Sunday or Monday. The NFL released a graphic, and it was who's going to be, who's going to hoist the Lombardi Trophy? Carson Palmer was one of the seven quarterbacks that was in the and graphic. They conspicuously left off someone, Yeah, I was going right? to say, Tom, Tom Brady, Brady conspicuously <laughs> absent. In well, this. I'm sure Carson Palmer's going to be able to pick up the Lombardi well, not Trophy. Carson, not Carson, oh my, Andy Dalton. A Andy Dalton, well, sure, he'll be able to pick up the Lombardi Trophy and hand it to somebody when he visits it someplace else. <laughs> <laughs> but the Lombardi Trophy's not coming to Cincinnati. I don't think it's going to either place, that's for certain. But I think, I, I mean, just to have that playoff umph, I would say a bank would be a Cincinnati Bengal. Well, the idea is that they're closer, I guess. But like Mark said, they can't, they can't start from scratch. The right. Browns can keep starting and maybe have a lucky year. Well, not lucky year, but maybe work their way up towards a good year. In pro sports, particularly in the NBA and the NFL, you would much rather be either really good or really bad. If you're in the middle in those two leagues, you're yeah. nowhere. And that's yeah. where the Bengals it, are. They're it's hard to the stay there for very yeah. long. It's hard to stay in the middle very long in those two leagues. But this whole question brings up the obvious point that being a fan isn't logical. <laughs> That's why they're called fans. They don't think logically. If you're a fan of the Browns, you think it's better to be a Browns fan than a Bengals fan just because you're a Browns fan and not a Bengals fan. We tried to put some logic into it, and we couldn't find it. <laughs> All right, so let's close with your Super Bowl picks. Who's going to be playing in February? Speaking of illogical, I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> Although I, w I would say it's hard to pick against Seattle in the NFC. I, I still think they're the best team in the NFC and the you know, AFC I don't know. I, I wouldn't have any idea. Baltimore seems to be a fancy pick or a popular pick, but I'm not sold on them either. I'll pick half a Super Bowl. I'll go with Seattle. I'll say it's the Patriots. They'll lie, cheat, and steal their way to get there. Of course you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the year of Indy. Ah, going with the Colts. All right. Well played, Kimo Sabi. Yeah. That's right. I was going to say Indy, and Indy or Baltimore in Seattle. All right. Well, we'll check back when we're talking high school basketball. This will be filed. <laughs> yeah. This footage yeah. will be filed, I'm sure. All right. Well, thanks, guys. That's going to do it for this week's Press Row. We'll see you out at your games on Friday and Saturday. Enjoy the weekend.